Ever wonder what it's like to be a myrmecologist, i.e. a scientist who studies ants? In this video, we travel all the way to Chicago, Illinois to meet renowned myrmecologist Dr. Corey Moreau and her enthusiastic associates at the Field Museum of Natural History, who have dedicated their entire lives to studying ants. We take a closer look at what it's like to be a myrmecologist, what they love about the job and its challenges, and we also ask the big question, how much money does a myrmecologist make? You don't want to miss all this amazing ant love and information straight from professional myrmecologists themselves. We also announce the winner of last week's AC Question of the Week, as well as announce this week's AC Question of the Week for a very exciting prize. Here we go, ant lovers. If any of you guys have been thinking of studying ants as a profession, or were just curious about the world of myrmecology, then this video is for you. Welcome to another episode of the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Visiting Dr. Corey Moreau's ant lab at the Field Museum of Natural History was super exciting. Can you imagine an entire laboratory and facility whose sole purpose is to study ants? The Moreau lab was just full of awesome ant goodies, literature, memorabilia, and art. Truly an ant lover's paradise. Now, I had visited their ant lab last year, but sadly missed Dr. Corey Moreau, who, by the way, insists we call her Corey, as she was out of town. But this time, it was amazing to finally have the opportunity to sit down and chat with Corey about our favorite topic, ants. So here we go. Corey, please kindly introduce yourself to our AC family. Hi, I'm Dr. Corey Moreau, and I'm an associate curator and professor here at the Field Museum of Natural History. Thank you, Corey. We're so happy you're joining us today. So as a myrmecologist, please tell us what you do. Oh my goodness, what do I do? Uh, I get to study ants from all over the world. So mostly what that means is I run around the jungles of the world collecting ants um, so that I can bring them back to the museum, some of which we sort of curate in that typical way that you think of your museum cur you know, collections with them on pins so we can examine their morphology. But almost everything we do in my lab is DNA-based or genomic-based. So what we do then is we take them down to our DNA lab and extract parts of the DNA or genome so that we can study aspects of either the evolution of the ant itself and in some cases we're actually also looking at the bacteria associated with their guts to figure out what's the functional role of those bacteria and how they helped the ants sort of expand into novel niches or diversify on an evolutionary time scale. Wow, it really sounds like you do a lot in myrmecology. It also sounds pretty technical and intensive. So we're wondering what kind of schooling is required to be a myrmecologist? So to be a myrmecologist, no schooling is required. Now, to have a position such as mine, you have to go all the way through the PhD. But I know some amazing myrmecologists who are amateur myrmecologists, right? So they've just dedicated their free time of their lives to studying ants. Now, if you want to make it a career where you're getting paid, in some cases, you have to have at least some amount of schooling. So at least an under undergraduate degree in entomology um, or related field. Uh, and then if you sort of want to continue to move up the ladder and run your own research program, then you might need a PhD. Whoa, okay. So please kindly take us through your typical workday. Hmm. My typical workday, I wish I could say it's more glamorous, but oftentimes it's writing grants, checking emails, and working on manuscripts. That's the average day. But luckily for me, I get to go and actually do field work myself. So I actually travel to tropical parts of the world and work all the way from the, the ground underneath the canopy all the way to the top of the canopy collecting ants. Uh, and so that's sort of, I think, for me, the most exciting part of what I get to do. Now, of course, we get to generate lots of data down in our DNA lab, which is also really fun. But for me, often the most exciting part is when we see the results. Sometimes it's almost exactly what you would have predicted ahead of time, but more often than not, it's not what you've predicted. And then trying to understand what you're seeing is really exciting. I also got a unique chance to talk to members of Corey's team. Hi there, sir. Please introduce yourself to the AC family. Uh, my name is Matt Boot. I'm a research assistant here at the Field Museum. I work in Dr. Corey Murillo's lab, and uh, basically I help her process and curate the specimens that she's collected throughout the years and uh, help get them into the museum and record it in history for the posterity. Sounds good. Okay, so I gotta ask, why is it important to curate ants? Why do we got to record and keep track of all the ants we find? Um, it's very important because it really goes hand in hand with the types of biological research that we do. So uh, museums are great repositories of this rich biological record that we've collected. And uh, in many ways, we can access in new ways now that we have molecular techniques to address 
questions about evolution um, in this way. Corey, what is your favorite ant to study? My favorite ant in the world is are the turtle ants, and my favorite species is Cephalodes varians, and that's the Florida turtle ant. And it's these beautiful ants with these little disc-shaped heads where they use them to block the nest entrances in which they live. At least the soldiers do. And then the minor workers are the ones that sort of run around and do all of the, the things like foraging for food and caring for the individuals in the nest and helping rear the brood. But I love the turtle ants. Yes, turtle ants certainly are cool. I mean, how can you not like an ant that looks like this? We also got a chance to chat with another member of her team who helps her research these ants. Hello, please kindly introduce yourself to the AC family. My name is Shauna Price. I am a postdoctoral researcher here at the Field Museum, and I work with Dr. Corey Moreau. I study a group of ants called turtle ants, and they live in the neotropics in places like the Amazon and into in Central and South America. And I work on their evolutionary relationships using molecular techniques. And I also try to study how their traits have evolved across time and how um, ecology has influenced the species relationships and how the traits have evolved over time. Corey, what was your most memorable moment working as a myrmecologist? You know, that's a hard one to say, I think. On the one hand, it's sort of the first time you ever went to the field, right? That's like, you know, it's such an enlightening experience. But at the same time, like I think maybe the, my most memorable recent experience, experience is that I got to go to French Guiana where they have this special system for accessing the canopy. And essentially you're just sitting in a chair by yourself and you get to go get hoisted up into the um, canopy by yourself and you have a little remote control and it's entirely silent. So it's just you up there collecting ants in the trees. And so it's, since it's so quiet, birds are coming next to you. I had a howler monkey come and check me out. I mean, and so of course, you know, being that, you know, intimately part of nature is exciting. But for me, it was seeing these ants up there in the top of the canopy. I mean, we're talking like 100 feet in the air, like, you know, just doing the things that they're typically doing. I mean, in fact, we saw some species of ants. We, I saw some species of ants foraging in the top of the canopy that we assumed only were, you know, stayed on the ground or maybe low vegetation. So even making unique observations is part of it. Wow, that's just crazy. That gave me goosebumps. What an experience for sure. So we gotta know, what is the most fulfilling part of what you do? I think for me the most fulfilling part is that I get to do what I love every single day. I love my job. I mean, I get to come in and ask questions about the evolution of biodiversity on the planet. And that is so exciting. So you believe in evolution? Oh, absolutely. I mean, how else can you explain all the diversity on the planet? Corey, are there any job perks to being a myrmecologist? Oh, I think for me, the biggest job perk is that I get to supervise students. I mean, for me, that's so rewarding to get the opportunity to share my passion with the next generation and also see their passion. And I got to meet one of the students on her team. And by student, I mean PhD candidate. Meet Benjamin, who studies polyrachis ants. I'm Benjamin Blanchard. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Chicago, and I also work in the lab here at the Field Museum. Currently I'm working on polyrachis ants. Uh, polyrachis is this um, really interesting, uh, diverse, spiny ant genus. Uh, so a group of species that has a whole variety of different kinds of crazy spines. Uh, and so I'm, I'm interested in um, looking at the at how the um, evolution of these spines might affect the uh, ecology and evolution of, of the, the uh, ants. The Moreau Lab also happens to be the workplace of ant researchers from other countries and who also study other branches of biology like Cipria over here, who studies the relationship between ants and birds. My name is Cipria. I am a PhD candidate in the Moreau Lab and Trevor Price Lab at University of Chicago, and I'm from India originally. So I look at interactions between birds and ants to see if they might be competing with each other and influencing each other's species diversity patterns. I also got to meet some of the volunteers. My name is Madeline Debu Jenkins. Uh, I'm a volunteer here in the ant lab, and would be in anthropology. <laughs> now Madeline over here, having studied primates, had a hilarious story to share on how she got into myrmecology. Madeline, what's the story on how you got into studying ants? Uh, so for, after I graduated, got my degree in anthropology, I did a field course on primatology in uh, tropical Peru, and uh, at one point, <laughs> I got stung by two bullets. 
I, I sat on them. And uh, <laughs> while sort of recovering from that, I, one of the other biologists there brought me this huge book of ants called Journey to the Ants. And uh, I started reading it and got really interested and started doing like a little mini project on some of the ant species that I found in the area there while I was, just while I was also working on primatology thing. <laughs> Oh man, now we gotta know, what does it feel like to be stung by a bullet ant? Oh gosh! <laughs> it, well there's that chart, uh, Schmidt chart or something like that that describes all the stings. That's, I mean, that's pretty accurate. But yeah, it was, uh, two, like, one after another, very immediate, red, hot, metallic, like, jabs. I, um... I, I jumped up very quickly and uh, uttered a lot of expletives. Um, and I was in the middle of nowhere, so it wasn't like I was a couple miles outside of camp. And uh, so walking back was awkward. Wow. But then two days later, I got stung by a bunch of army ants. So <laughs> what did that feel like? That hurt a lot, too. And that was that was like way more. Um, they got into my binoculars case and I didn't see them. And I reached in and they just poured all over my hand. So my hand swelled up like twice its size. And it was my dominant hand. So every time I went to like open a door, I was reminded that I'd been stung. Um, and that was, an, again, very burning, like grabbing a coal. Now, it sounds like working in myrmecology has its work hazards, too. But I had to ask her. Okay, so in this day and age on YouTube, challenges are a huge thing. And people have been suggesting that I should try a bullet ant challenge and allow myself to be stung by a bullet ant. Do you think I should do this? No, it's horrible. <laughs> All right, noted. Okay, Corey, so here's the big question everybody wants to know. How much does a myrmecologist make and can it be a lucrative career? Oh my gosh. Um, okay, so how much does a myrmecologist make? I think it varies pretty dramatically. I mean, there are some pretty famous myrmecologists, and so they probably make some pretty big paychecks. But on average, I think you can sustain yourself, but you're not going to be living in a mansion. Um, but that's okay. I mean, at least for me, it's that I get to do what I love every single day. So as long as I can pay my bills and keep going on trips collecting ants and studying the evolution of ants, I'm completely satisfied. Such a great and inspiring attitude. Okay, so Corey, what is the most challenging part of what you do? Um, the most challenging part, I think it's that not everyone appreciates ants as much as we do. Uh, and I always find it interesting when you have to justify why you would be in love with ants. I, I'm often surprised that other people don't see their beauty, and not just their physical beauty, but like their importance in the environment. And and so, you know, I... I don't like when people say that, you know, they would rather have no ants because I don't think they realize what that actually would mean for the planet. Ants are incredibly important ecologically. Um, they play a lot of roles in the environment. They make up a huge biomass. They're incredibly diverse um, and they can help us address a lot of questions about evolution. I think that uh, young people can find it. Um, Myrmecology interesting because it's a branch of biology, which to me, biology is all about understanding the world better. And so uh, that's really what drew me into biology is is wanting to know more about the world around me, wanting to understand it and my place inside of, in, in it. So um, I think that that's really important for a, um, a time when younger people may not be, have as much of a tangible connection to the world around them as they used to. Getting to work with ants and in this environment it's i've always come to the field museum since i was a little kid and it's a really good place to come to and learn about and getting to work behind the scenes here is amazing i really like the um, both being able to do the research component and also getting to do outreach really easily um, and so i think that the um, something like the field museum here or in many other museums have opportunities to talk about your science with with other people both little kids all the way up to uh, people who are not so young anymore. So <laughs> it's amazing. I really like working where I do because I live in a little village and it's really nice. The people are super sweet and it's beautiful. And for all of us ant lovers, Corey had a very inspiring message. Keep studying ants. I mean, there's so much out there. There's no way that in my lifetime, even with all of the myrmecologists out there, that we're going to even scratch the surface. We need all of you to study ants to sort of get a better understanding of what they're doing and why they're doing it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Corey, for sitting down with us today. 
It was my pleasure. Thanks. And there you have it, guys. You heard her. Keep on studying ants. The world of myrmecology needs you to seek the answers to important questions, not just about ants, but about us, how we got here, how nature works, and how we fit into it, and about how all life on the planet came to be. Being able to talk to Corey and her enthusiastic team was truly special. It's just amazing to think that these guys have so much ant love that they decided that ants were important enough to devote their entire lives to. Dr. Moreau is on a lifelong quest to answer questions about evolution. But there is so much to study out there about ants. And who knows, in a few years, you too might be working at one of these ant labs. For more about the Moreau Lab and what these amazing folks are doing there, visit MoreauLab.org. I'll put a link in the description box. So what do you guys think? Would you guys become a myrmecologist? Let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and always remember... It's ant love forever. Okay, time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what is the name of a Queen Dialate sealed off chamber where she raises her first set of workers? And so, congratulations to... Soul Thief 1991 who correctly answered the claustral cell. Soul Thief 1991, you won a new set of test tubes from our shop used for queen rearing or liquid colony feeding. And now this week's question of the week is... What is the scientific name of Dr. Moreau's favorite species of ant to study? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could win our first of our brand new series of AC Ant Shirts which will be debuting at our shop in a few weeks. Which means, yes, you will be among the first to wear one in the whole world. Tune in for the winner next week. Thanks guys for watching this video, it really means a lot to me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, we upload a video every Monday at 8 a.m. sharp Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget to check out our great playlists on this channel. You'll see an ant tutorial playlist over there that can help all of you beginner ant keepers. And we have a fire ant playlist for those of you who like to watch large active colonies. Finally, don't forget to visit us at antscanada.com. We have lots of great information on ant keeping. We've got a forum full of thousands of ant keepers from all over the world who you can learn from. And please, if you've got ant colonies, don't forget to contribute. And I highly recommend you journal in the journaling section. And finally, if you need ant colonies, be sure to visit our GAN project at the Queen Ants for Sale section. We sell ant colonies in key cities all over the world. And if you'd like to be a GAN farmer and sell colonies of your own in your city, please write to us at gan at antscanada.com. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Thanks, guys.